Thank you for coming in. Uh, I'm Nikos Morianopoulos, and I'm going to present uh, the state of cryptography in uh, Fedora. Uh, who am I? I work for Red Hat, for the Red Hat crypto team. Uh, we supervise uh, a lot of components uh, which relate to crypto, both in uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Fedora. I, I myself, I contribute to open source software, to free software, and uh, Fedora, of course. So let me move on. Uh, what this talk uh, will be about, it will go through the major initiatives in uh, Fedora cryptographic support. Uh, it will also go through a uh, few, briefly, few, few uh, important future directions. Uh, and why is it useful to go through all these major, major initiatives? It's because uh, we can learn from our mistakes. There have been mistakes down there. Uh, uh, and we can also see uh, our current uh, status and current direction that we have taken. So let me start from the beginning. And the beginning is uh, the early days of uh, Fedora and Red Hat itself. I split it into two major periods. The early days is a period where community and uh, Fedora and Red Hat on one side uh, were on different, uh, were separate. Uh, on one side was the community doing one thing, and uh, the other side was uh, Red Hat and Fedora doing a different thing. And uh, how did we end up there? Let me start uh, telling a story. So Red Hat was entering the business world at the time. Uh, we were the outsider who wanted to sell into financial sector and into highly regulated industries. So we were looking at uh, certifications like common criteria, like FIPS, and we wanted to get there to make open source software pass all the certifications uh, that uh, commercial software at the time had, uh, proprietary software at the time had. Uh, so in a way, we managed. Uh, open source entered uh, re highly regulated sectors, demanding sectors, uh, the financial sector. Uh, quite successfully. Today, nobody questions that. Uh, quite, uh, today, everything, uh, open source is very widespread. And how did we manage this? Uh, through a project called the Fedora Consolidation, uh, Crypto Consolidation Project. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar uh, with that project, if you have par participated with it. Uh, may I ask how many? One, two, four. Okay, I will explain a little more about this project. It was about a project to consolidate all the crypto to a single one because uh, we saw there, was, there were many crypto libraries, uh, crypto backends in open source, maybe way too many at the time, uh, we thought at the time, and it made sense to consolidate them in one so that we can easier certify it. Uh, certification was a very expensive process and Red Hat was very small at the time. Uh, we wanted to consolidate it in one, uh, and in a way, we wanted to change the crypto landscape with a bulldozer. That's why I selected the bulldozer there. Uh, we had one bulldozer, so it, we didn't succeed. Uh, so what was happening in Fedora at the time? Uh, Red Hat was focused on uh, NSS, which was the selected uh, library to replace everything. Uh, Fedora was kind of following behind Red Hat on that, uh, considering NSS the primary choice. Uh, but everything else was actually building up without anyone paying attention. OpenSSL was being updated, uh, GNUTL is the same, GNOME, uh, everything else was using their crypto libraries. But no one was uh, paying attention, uh, at least in, in an organized way, from the perspective of an operating system. So all enhancements were upstream driven. Uh, were entering Fedora and co coordinated, uh, and, and we ended up with a very complex landscape like these rocks there. Uh, it had a lot of rough edges, it didn't have a feeling of an operating system. The second phase of that story is the reconsideration phase. Uh, at that time, Red Hat and uh, probably most of Fedora contributors had realized that the consolidation project failed. Uh, and something changed then. And uh, let me go again to the end of this phase. It was that Fedora, at least in my view, and uh, Red Hat were closer to the community. Uh, 
Uh, why did that matter to us? Because we don't want to only pull from the community. As Fedora, we are an operating system. We want to also contribute to the community to improve uh, backends in a way that they fit the operating system, that they are suitable to be used in the operating system. We don't want just OpenSSL in Fedora. We want OpenSSL in a way that we can use it uh, consistently with the other libraries in Fedora. So it's much easier for, for us to work together with the community rather than in parallel. So how did we get there? Uh, so we realized that we have a lot of crypto libraries and we have a lot of diverse crypto libraries, so we have to make them work well together. Uh, that was the first step, the realization. Uh, and what happens after realization? It's the, you have to face the facts. And the fact was that uh, Fedora was very ugly at the time uh, in terms of crypto. Uh, uh, if you know to, for the internet public key infrastructure to work, you need to have trust anchors. And uh, trust anchors uh, are installed in the operating system. If you go to Windows to, or to any other operating system, they are globally. In Fedora at the time, you, they were installed with specific components. Java had its own trust anchors. Uh, OpenSSL, I think, had its own trust anchors. Firefox, uh, its own, and so on. So. What is the situation then? You run an application, it works uh, because it's linked with Java. You run another application, it cannot connect to another server because uh, it's not linked with Java. Uh, so you have a situation where each application uses its own set of trust anchors. Uh, then it comes the question, how do I install a company-wide certificate or a certificate that is only valid for my LAN? How do I apply blacklist globally in the operating system? We couldn't do any of this stuff at the time. So the first project that was towards uh, unification of the libraries at the time was the shared system certificates across the operating system. Uh, so it was a project about using the Mozilla Trust Store as a central trust store for everything in Fedora. And uh, in order to make it work, we had to contribute to several, sorry, uh, several upstream projects. Uh, and we kind of make it work as it is in that picture, a central trust store used by every other application, every crypto backend. Uh, how does it work? Uh, something like this. If you have a Fedora today, you can write trust list, and you get the list of uh, trusted certificates that exist there, the list of trust certificates that are used by all applications. In this particular case, we see the Amazon uh, root CA certificate. And how do we add a new certificate? Again, with the same uh, tool, Trust Anchor, uh, certificate name, uh, the certificate file, and update CA Trust to propagate uh, this trust to everywhere uh, from Java to, to other applications when needed. So that was uh, about certificates. Then let's go on, let's, mo let's move on. So. This is the goddess of uh, chaos. Uh, her name is Eris, and thi this was the second part, uh, the second major uh, issue that was seen during the reconsideration uh, phases. That uh, when you have uh, multiple systems uh, uh, using containers, virtual machines running Fedora, let's say you have a hundred uh, containers running Fedora, and you see a hundred connections coming out from these containers. Can you predict what would be the TLS settings uh, that would, would be used for these connections? Can anybody answer? Uh, <laughs> that, that's true, you, you cannot predict, and you don't know if they will be secure, uh, you don't know if they will be insecure. Uh, that, that's why I selected to this goddess of chaos. It was impossible to predict anything. Uh, so we had the consistent settings, uh, not only on TLS, but with SSH, with IPsec, depending on the library application you'll be using, you may use totally different settings. Uh, that's when the crypto, uh, Fedora Crypto Policies project started, which was mainly a safety net and will uh, protect uh, all applications from going under uh, these settings. It will provide the baseline for applications uh, crypto settings. How did it work? 
it had uh, three global policies. So it was focused on uh, simplicity, only three policies to so make it uh, easy to, to understand. The default would apply by default to every application. Future was more conservative uh, for uh, networks that uh, don't necessarily need to talk to the internet, but they need to be protected for five or ten years. Maybe five is a more reasonable target. Uh, legacy is uh, if you are primarily deploying Fedora in a, an environment where you are talking only with very old systems uh, deployed 10 or 15 years ago. So, and you could select between these three policies globally. And how would you do that? Uh, you would uh, run these commands, update crypto policy so, it will show you which uh, policy is now your Fedora at, and uh, you can even switch it using the same tool. And uh, does it apply to whole Fedora? No. <laughs> it applies to a large part of the Fedora, however. It applies to major crypto libraries. Uh, it applies to Kerberos. It applies to SSH, to open SSH. It applies to DNSSEC if you are using Bint, uh, Python, uh, Java, uh, Perl. Uh, all the major libraries are, uh, and languages are pre uh, being covered. Uh, that's, that relates also to the question that was raised in previous talks, what is the core operating system today? Because we didn't have a target to cover, we just were trying to cover everything and that was pretty much impossible. Uh, Fedora is simply too large. I will get back to it later. So as part of this uh, policy, we need to work with a lot of upstreams because uh, the global settings uh, notion was not available uh, to OpenSSL at the time. It was not available to NSS. It was not available in NUTLS. It was not available pretty much anywhere. So we had to, cont to work together with all the upstreams to introduce this notion. And today in uh, Fedora 28, it works well. In Fedora 29, it's going to work better, but uh, w we are getting there. So what was the next step? Uh, the next step is something different. Uh, it was about smart cards. Um, in, if you're familiar with smart cards, there are two competing uh, open source drivers. There is the Kulki driver, and competing in quotes. Uh, I will explain why later. There is the OpenSC driver and the uh, Kulki uh, cool driver. Uh, the Kulki driver is something developed internally in uh, Red Hat. I think it was uh, ended up in Red Hat through an acquisition, but maybe I'm wrong about this. Yeah. And uh, it's a driver about uh, which covers the Kulki card, which is uh, part of a Red Hat pro uh, product, and the U.S. government uh, cards. OpenSC is a community-based project uh, which targets pretty much everything under the sun. Uh, but didn't have support for these cards that uh, Red Hat care about. So Fedora was actually shipping two drivers for an overlapping list of cards. And uh, uh, in the end, we had to go there. We wanted to go there. We wanted to have only OpenSC, which was a viable uh, community project, and move uh, our kind of proprietary drivers, because although they were open source, there was no community behind them. It was uh, a developer at Red Hat only. So we contributed this, uh, our drivers back to the community. Uh, we worked very well with the OpenSC uh, guys there. I don't know if I don't see someone from OpenSC, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so in the end, now in Fedora 28, we have an uh, OpenSC driver covering all possible uh, smart cards that you may need uh, in Fedora. Uh, furthermore, something that uh, I'll skim briefly, but I think is quite important, uh, it's about uh, hardware security modules. Uh, hardware security modules are very similar to smart cards, and once we optimized the, the driver for smart cards, the next step was optimizing the, make it more, more uh, user-friendly, the interaction for smart cards and hardware security modules. Uh, they usually operate under the same API called PKS11. So a big enhancement that came in Fedora 28, a little, uh, it was not announced, it was a little under the hood, was that uh, Mod SSL had uh, much better support for hardware security modules via uh, Engine PKS11, uh, which is now called OpenSSL PKS11 in Fedora. 
so you can uh, set up Apache uh, and have it use a hardware security module, a TPM or something else where you cannot extract the keys. Uh, already on Fedora 28. I, I don't know, uh, ha have you ever used uh, hardware security modules? Are you familiar with hardware security modules? Peter is. Uh, the may maybe not, uh, mo mo most of you, you are not. The hardware security module is something that uh, takes the keys out of your PC and moves them to a chip uh, and in a way that you cannot extract it back, but you can use it. Uh, that's quite important. Uh, so you can run Apache, have your keys in the security module, and uh, you have a hard bleed attack on OpenSSL, and, but your keys are still correct. You reinstall the operating system, and you are sure your, your keys uh, have not been uh, stolen. So you don't need to regenerate old PKI. You don't need to regenerate anything. Let's go a little to the future directions of Fedora. Maybe not that long, but uh, I'll go through a, lot, a few challenges that uh, relate to crypto. So TLS 1.3. TLS 1.3 is a new protocol. Uh, it was uh, designed uh, for four years in EF. Uh, it was driven by browsers mostly. Uh, it comes with a very uh, significant performance uh, uh, change. Uh, you can have connections in one round trip or even in zero round trip. Uh, that's kind of uh, important for systems where you need it to be very uh, interactive. And it comes with better privacy. The question is, can we have it in Fedora 29 or later? Uh, there have been some trials already. We believe uh, we have very few regressions uh, because the protocol doesn't map 100%. We have some reservations there, but probably we're going to see it sooner or later in Fedora landing there. Uh, the experience we have with browsers is also encouraging. So most likely you should expect it in Fedora soon. Uh, one other challenge for the future is uh, we have Let's Encrypt. It's an easy way to uh, get your certificates. Uh, I, th I think what is a nice challenge for Fedora is can we have an operating system where you don't need to care about certificates, where certificates come automatically by the operating system. You, uh, you install your service and you have a certificate already there. Uh, I think it's a good idea, uh, but uh, at this point it's only me. So if you are interested, I'm really happy to discuss about it uh, later. And my main point for the future directions is this, actually. Uh, Fedora is puffing. Uh, we ha are continuously adding software in Fedora, but we have uh, no process to deprecate any software. Once something is added, it's over. It will exist there forever as long as it compiles and there is some maintainer assigned to it. Uh, that's a very low bar uh, because uh, the software may compile, but uh, threat models change over the years. Uh, Ten years ago, uh, the threat model for crypto was a remote attacker. The threat model today is a remote attacker who has access to your CPU, uh, who has access to the cache of your CPU. So having a crypto software for 10 years uh, with no updates most likely means uh, you are today insecure. And let's see what it means for Fedora. We have, uh, I, I skimmed through my Fedora system. These are the crypto libraries we are shipping uh, that I could find in uh, 20 seconds. And most likely we'll have 10 times more of this. Uh, that's a very large security perimeter, and uh, on the operating system level, it's an unmanageable, un unmanageable situation. Uh, do having that many crypto libraries really help uh, the community? Uh, that is not uh, that does not relate with the consolidation. It's a different question having one and. Uh, we can have, uh, we, we don't want to get to the situation where we say, okay, that's one crypto library, we're using this, but yeah, is a thousand crypto libraries good for Fedora? Uh, everyone from these libraries most likely believes their library is the best. Uh, it's the, 
uh, their own solution provides the best uh, countermeasures for attacks. However, we see very little collaboration all over. We see that more new libraries that just come and re-implement whatever is there continuously. We see Amazon developing a new library instead of helping other libra uh, the older libraries to become better. We see Facebook creating a new library instead of helping all the libraries become better. So how, how do we go from there? Do we add all these libraries in Fedora? Uh, we also have several open source, but not community or any solutions, meaning we have a company which open source is what they are doing. However, they don't really accept contributions from the community. If you try to work with them, they will tell you if it doesn't suit with what they are doing, it's uh, over. So having too many libraries maybe doesn't help. And let me put it in contrast with RHEL, which is a commercial operating system from Red Hat's operating system. It's a fraction of these libraries that is shipped. Uh, that's, that's because uh, you cannot guarantee the, the security of so many libraries. Yeah, the, the, the question or the comment was that uh, we have uh, libraries which come as a dependency, uh, not necessarily because uh, they thought it was the best library for the task, but uh, because it was depending on something else. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't have a good question. We have seen this question in, uh, in Enterprise Linux, and uh, the answer was we, we don't bring these dependencies uh, if they are known to be insecure. Uh, it, in right, so there's the known to be secure, insecure problem right now, and there's, that would be awesome if we could address it. But the other side is, you know, maybe it doesn't have anything known right now, but it's still sitting there, and nobody can do anything to change it. So do we have a way to, to look and say, all right, is there a way to fix it on the front end? So in other words, we're not really, uh, is, it, is it being maintained upstream and not really being maintained? Yeah, it, it would be very nice to have something automatic there to detect, at, or at least to flag uh, these components as inactive on upstream. It, it can happen always that you can have an inactive upstream for two or three years and then they are back uh, developing. But uh, w when you are 10 years inactive, maybe maybe Fedora shouldn't be shipping a software that is inactive for so long. Uh, if it becomes later, maybe we should consider it. But uh, th this is the, the reason I'm uh, actually making this presentation to underline this problem that we are. Uh, Library has got a good security stack or not. Like there are a lot of secure libraries which are kind of 
Yeah, that could be something. And there is even a better tool than uh, Pelk. Pelk is an internal Red Hat tool that uh, we use to identify crypto. Please. You have a question? Or? The, the question is that uh, we have a lot of uh, crypto libraries that are language specific. So Java has its own crypto library, uh, Golang the same, and uh, I guess others the same. Uh, wh what's my take on this? Uh, I, I don't think we can answer in general. There are uh, languages which are safer, so maybe it makes sense to have a crypto there uh, because it provides an advantage. Uh, uh, Rust, let's say, is coming li like this, that w it's a safer language, you can have crypto there, and uh, you you will not have all the buffer overflows, you will not have... Yes, yes, th th this, this is correct, and the, the point is that maybe the language is safe, but maybe not the crypto is not. Uh, that does not necessarily mean we need to follow that. Uh, OpenJDK, for example, it provides hook, and you can use NSS for Java. Uh, RHEL was doing it for quite some time, so you would use Java, but you would use underlying the NSS implementation for crypto. Uh, so you reduce the security perimeter. Uh, I believe uh, Golang Crypto uh, can do the same. There is uh, already parts from uh, uh, Google that I can use Boring SSL, and uh, I, I, I am not sure if I can announce it, uh, but uh, uh, we are also looking on using Golang with OpenSSL. Uh, so, 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 
Yes, yes. So, so we can kind of reuse what we have there. I mean, if you have already open SSL in a system, the security perimeter is, is fixed. Uh, and if you use open SSL for Golang, even if you introduce problems by do doing that, uh, even if open SSL, for example, has a flow, it will affect uh, Golang, but it will not extend your, your perimeter. You can still fix it uh, once. You don't need to fix flows in Golang and in open SSL. I, I think that's a good idea. I, I, I am not pushing for it. Uh, I think sometimes it makes sense to have a separate security implementation, especially if you have a safe language also in the terms of uh, uh, timing resistance or memory access resistance, though I'm not sure we have such language uh, yet. Uh, so in, in some cases it may make sense. Uh, in general, I think it's better to reduce the security perimeter so, so uh, let me uh, move on. The, I think there was a discussion here where the questions I, I have here I were answered, but uh, let me uh, move on. Can, can we stop that uh, puffing of Fedora? I think we should make it easier to eliminate dead software from Fedora. Uh, we should make it automatic so that no one is involved. Uh, it was suggested before involved FESCO or uh, I don't think anybody should be involved. If a software has not been updated for 10, 15 years, it should be out automatically. Uh, it doesn't make sense to keep it in Fedora. Uh, it's a very long time. And uh, what I say under it, it maybe contradicts what we were suggesting before. We should allow new crypto software to enter Fedora I, we, as long as it respects uh, the policies, for example, that we have set up. We don't want to make Fedora stagnate. Uh, we want to have the new OpenSSL or the new GNUTLS in Fedora when it uh, gets designed. If it is used, if it is a nice library, uh, it uh, follows the crypto policies, let's bring it in Fedora. Let's not stop it. We should make it easier to remove uh, something that got in rather than make it harder uh, to get things to Fedora. The, the, um, yeah, yeah the, the comment was that uh, it's good to make people aware uh, of uh, that this problem exists, so that uh, when something enters uh, Fedora, we can uh, uh, review it. Uh, the thing is that I, I don't believe anybody would review it. Uh, I've, I've been involved in the past in Fedora. Uh, the Fedora security team, I've never seen it functional. Uh, I'm relatively new. I'm only four years uh, in the community. Yeah. If it does, it could be a nice thing. If you can review an implementation before getting in uh, crypto implementation, that, that would be good. Uh, and review even if it is superficial, just to see is the good language, uh, is the style, uh, for is good, good uh, development practice being followed in the development of the library, that, that would be good. Uh, so, so, so I, yeah, as you say, I do not believe we are at odds. Uh, I, I just, I would like to, I wanted to underline that we should allow new crypto to enter Fedora. We should not make it overly difficult so that we stagnate. Uh, yeah, and I would like to finish with that slide. Thank you very much for following. I like that picture. <laughs> But I think it's a good uh, picture of Fedora and crypto. <laughs> so, thank you. Yeah, I took questions during, but if you have any questions. Uh, I have two, two questions. Uh, the first, first one is, are you doing something to get a help so it should be a public so that those are the users at least to detect if any crypto is embedded, it should just code or something like that. And my second question 
Uh, and the question was about post quantum crypto. Is Fedora doing anything about it? And uh, whether PELC, which is a Red Hat tool, will uh, ever be made available to Fedora? Uh, I will start uh, with a second uh, about post quantum crypto. Uh, both uh, Red Hat and Fedora do not believe we are doing something organ in an organized uh, way. Uh, that's kind of a problem, uh, industry-wide problem, uh, at least for Red Hat, uh, post quantum crypto, because we don't have solutions at the moment. We have uh, some algorithms being pre uh, presented as post quantum safe, but we have no proofs. So we just know that these algorithms, uh, there is no attack on, on with a quantum comput computer, but we don't know if they are really secure. And that's not enough to start implementing it in uh, operating systems. We have also indications that uh, quantum computers are getting close, uh, but we don't have a practical quantum computer that can attack the crypto we have today. We just know that maybe in five or 10 years, we will be there. Uh, we have that feeling. Uh, depending on who you ask, uh, you may get a different timeline, but uh, we believe in 10 years, the problem will be there. So what do we do as Fedora? Uh, we wait. Uh, we wait until standards are established for uh, post quantum crypto. That we have an algorithm that is uh, widely accepted as a solution to the problem, and then we'll try to bring it in Fedora, uh, and maybe as Red Hat contribute to upstreams to bring that algorithm to upstreams. Now about Pelk. Pelk is a tool that automates uh, discovery of crypto in uh, uh, in packages like RPMs. But it's, it's not a very good tool. I, I don't think we should bring this to Fedora. There is a, be, because it has a very, <laughs> and it has many false, uh, false positives. So you start with a very long list of uh, crypto that was uh, invented because IDEA, for example, uh, uh, was mentioned in, in uh, somewhere in the code and uh, it thinks, oh, IDEA is implemented here. So there is a better tool, uh, uh, developed in uh, Red Hat uh, for that reason, but uh, and maybe you can get that uh, made open source and donated to Fedora. Uh, that's something we, we should probably dis discuss offline. Please. So the question is about uh, the trust store, uh, the certificate. Tr trust uh, about uh, certificates in general, whether we can share it between uh, containers, uh, between uh, the host uh, system. Uh, with the trust store, uh, we have currently a solution to share them uh, across uh, containers or across uh, virtual machines. Uh, actually, Flatpak is using that. Uh, P11 kit, w P11 kit implements the trust store in Fedora. So P11 kit allows you to forward smart cards uh, in uh, uh, between systems. So s the trust store is being implemented as a, is being uh, the interface of uh, the trust store is actually like the same interface as a smart card. So you can forward the trust store uh, read only to a remote system, so you can actually have the same certificates, uh, the same uh, trust anchors uh, as you have in the host, for example, uh, in the containers by forwarding with P11 kit. Uh, however, that will not work with the specific certificates, as you said, uh, because we don't have uh, in Fedora or any other links, we don't have something that is uh, can be seen as a, uh, uh, 
co container for your certificates or for your keys, uh, a keyring. We don't have, they used to be GNOME keyring, but it's not so generic to see, see it as a system keyring, and it's being phased out anyway. So we have an answer for the trust store. We don't have an answer for other certificates. Any other question? Please. Th that, that's a nice question. Uh, it's OpenSSL PKS11 uh, has a very bad description on uh, its package. And uh, the question is, uh, should I install it on my system? Uh, yeah, th the nice description, I think I will encourage you to open a bug against uh, OpenSSL PKS11 and say, uh, I don't understand what it is about. Uh, it, it makes sense. Uh, I mean, we should provide good descriptions in Fedora packages. Uh, the w now, going to the point, what does this package uh, do is if you have a hardware security module, if you have a Apache on your laptop. No, usually if you run a web server, uh, you, you usually know you, you are running the service uh, there. And uh, if, if you if you are if you want to use a, a hardware security module, uh, you also know because you have bought it. Uh, you bought the UBHSM or you bought uh, nit a Nitro key or something that can be used as an HSM. You plug it to your server and then you move your keys there and then you make Apache use these keys. So it, it, it was maybe in the past uh, targeted uh, an audience which was very uh, into it, they knew what PKS11 is. Maybe to today that HSMs are being more easily available, um, maybe we need to, to make them more attractive, more more, uh, more easy to understand. So you say PKS11 in general doesn't tell anything to you uh, as someone who may potentially want to use a hardware security module. If you don't use the hardware security module, you don't need it. Uh, if you don't use smart cards, you, you don't need it. Uh, if you use smart cards and uh, hardware security modules, you need it. It will make your life easier with how you specify the object to the smart card, with how you specify, uh, with how you find the driver to the smart card. I do not believe you will receive anything uh, be because it's uh, the dependencies are also recommended by uh, Apache and by uh, applications that may use it. So it will be installed automatically unless you remove it manually. Uh. <laughs> so thank you. I think we are over time. Uh, thank you a lot. Bye bye.